since his first octagon outing at UFC 89 all the way back in 2008, lightweight Jim Miller has welcomed all comers. From icons like Cowboy Cerrone and Nate Diaz to current top 10 names like Dustin Poirier and Charles Oliveira, Miller has faced all of them with his signature Jersey Tough grit. 40 plus UFC fights later, he owns multiple records with plans to extend those streaks in his upcoming bouts. We sat down to find out how he has made it this far and what's next. Well, this is a fighter's fighter to the highest degree. Jim Miller is a wild man. Win, lose, or draw, you're never gonna see a boring Jim Miller fight. He comes to scrap. The performances inside the Oxford, the records that he holds, I mean, it's unreal. I had no idea that I'd fight this long and be mentioned in some of these conversations. He's got 25 wins in the octagon. That's the most all time. He's making this walk for the 43rd time. That's the most fights in UFC history. It's been a surprise that I have been able to have this longevity. I wasn't expecting it, but here we are. I'm feeling good and performing well. Jim H. Miller! I grew up here in New Jersey. I think that sticking with my roots, having the people that I care about and that care about me close has helped me stay true to myself. I'd summarize my career as uh, pretty long. <laughs> I come from a wrestling family. I was on the mat as soon as I could walk, really two older brothers, and I was the youngest and always the smallest. In 1997, I went to wrestling camp with my brothers, and one of the high school coaches brought a VHS of one of the early UFCs, and that was the first time I was ever introduced to MMA. And immediately fell in love with it. I went to school for a little bit, but didn't excel academically at college. So my brother and I, we ended up opening up Miller Brothers MMA in Sparta, New Jersey. Having my brother there, Dan, to train with, that made me better. We trained every day together. Dan is five inches taller than me and 30 pounds heavier than me. So fighting some of these big lightweights was, it was nothing. On the local circuit, I had racked up quite a few fights. I was 11 and one. We are in the waning seconds of this round. I came up through the local ranks, and then I had my opportunity with the UFC. From Sparta, New Jersey, one of the two Miller brothers, great fighter, a really entertaining young kid, and uh, it's nice to see him finally in the UFC. I was able to put on a good performance in my debut fight and get a bonus. He's got it deep, here. Mike. That's deep. That's it. It is all over. By committing and, and being all into it, I was able to reap the rewards and make it my profession. This is exactly what he wanted. This is bad for Ludwig. He's got it! My first 10 fights in the UFC, I went nine and one. Jim's gonna lay out Jim! Miller submits Charles Oliveira! It's hard to pick out favorite moments. My first fight with Joe Lozon, it was an epic fight. Oh, beautiful attack by Miller. And Lozon covering up here early. Oh my God, big shots by Miller. Dirty boxing here. He's hurt, Lozon is hurt. I can still hear the crowd in between rounds. Five minutes to go here for these lightweight warriors. This is a grueling fight, beautiful inside leg kick. Nice knee to the body by Lozon. Miller may be hurt. Joe Lozon dropping down for a heel hook. Joe Lozon trying to finish Jim Miller in the waning seconds. Wow, what a fight. Yeah, that's definitely one that's like, it sticks with me. My brother Dan and I fought on a lot of cards together. We were the first siblings to fight on the same card and win. UFC 128, that was probably like, the hardest fight that I've had. And it wasn't the fight. It was just the extra stuff. 
that added to it. The card was on March 19th. That would have been my late niece's second birthday. She was born with some complications, had a tough labor, and, and passed away you know, a couple of hours after being born. So Dan and I, now we were fighting back to back on the main card. Dan he went out first and he fought a contender, one of the best 85 pounders on the planet with a broken heart. I could definitely see it in his performance that, uh, that he wasn't there. All I wanted to do was like be there for him, be in his corner, and I, I couldn't, you know, I had, to, I had to do my thing. Jim Miller against Kamal Shalarus. Are you ready? Let's fight! That fight, that win, it was important. Precisely why I'm a big Jim Miller fan. This dude comes to bang. Charlotte was going be hurt. Nice knee. Charlotte was looking Charlotte. to finish his fight. It is all over. And then came backstage, and the first thing I did was gave him a hug. It's easily the hardest thing that I've had to do in fighting. One quick one for Jim. Jim, uh, talk about your emotions right now. My late niece would be two years old tonight, so, you know, it was. Uh, yeah, it was tough. Two days or three days before UFC 196, I went for my physical. I was talking to my doctor and I was in a ton of pain. There were days where I just couldn't get out of bed. So he ran a series of tests and when the test results came back, I was actually out in Vegas for that fight. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'm pretty certain you've got Lyme disease. It, uh, it kicked my butt at the end of 16 into, into early 17. and It chewed me up inside. Up. And then it was a long battle with it. Yep. I fought Dustin Poirier early 2017 with Lyme disease. Jim Miller making the walk for his 26th UFC appearance, contemplated retirement after being diagnosed with Lyme disease, but went on medication, was feeling better to set up this showcase against the top 10 opponent, Dustin Poirier. The Lyme had come back and gotten a pretty good hold on me. Fight night, I was having a reaction. My arm was twitching like uncontrollably, flu-like symptoms. When the house lights dimmed down, everything had this weird yellow tint to it. And like, I remember being like, well, that's weird. <laughs> and it's like, you know, there's nothing you can do about it now. So like, let's right. just, You're let's right. go. Hey. Poirier in blue, Miller is in black, Southpaw versus Southpaw here. Poirier with a beautiful combination, and Miller returns. Oh, they're going after it here. That's what we talked oh. about. How long, how long could Dustin Poirier fight the urge, him and Jim Miller, to actually do that? Oh, man, Poirier pouring it on. Oh, that was a hard right hook. And Miller look comes look back to one of his own. Oh. It was a really, really tough fight. That fight was brutal. It was miserable. I felt like it was in a car wreck. I had that first pre-Lime era. I won a lot of fights in my early part of my career, just stepping on the gas pedal and outpacing people. And then I had the Lyme disease era where the symptoms came in. I couldn't sprint, I couldn't lift, I couldn't do the things that were my strengths. Fortunately, I was able to beat it into remission prioritizing being healthy is number one, not getting injured. That's the biggest key. I try to train to my strengths, fight to my strengths, but also learn new stuff. Then we work on the technique, the stuff I'm good at. The last thing I worry about is what my opponent brings to the table these days, which sounds crazy, but uh, that's the secret sauce, you know? There's all the ingredients for what I'm doing. We're at a point where I've figured out how to train and how to fight. As now a 40-year-old, I've been able to stay true to myself. I get to be me when I'm outside the gym, and that's important. I'm an outside kind of guy. I like to be outside, hunting, fishing, just really anything. I am happy splitting firewood, moving dirt on the tractor, in the garden. The things that I care about, the things that I want to do, I've had access to them here. I've been able to kind of set myself up in a spot now that where I get to do all that stuff and stay active and keep my mind busy. Experience is a weapon, it's a tool. 
I fought pretty much everybody in the division and I fought every body type and style. So I, I know what to expect. Sometimes people call me a journeyman or something like that. I'm five and one in my last six with five finishes, 23 second knockout in there. Oh, Miller sets him down. It doesn't sound like a journeyman to me. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that I hope that people take away from my legacy is I am not going to be happy if I win by decision. Oh, guillotine. Oh, it's tight, it's tight. Stop, stop. There's the tap. Wow. He is the all-time wins leader in UFC history. There's that silly voice inside my head that that's all I want. The legacy should just be that, that willingness to, to fight and to, to keep going. And like, I'm going to go as hard as I can go for as long as I can go. Just remarkable stuff, what this man continues to do time after time. Jim! 